Sophie here and today I'm going to be talking about how to reduce your body fat. Basically how to, yeah, eat your way slim. Hi, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I am Sophie and I am very glad that you've made your way here. So today I'm going to jump right in and talk about how to reduce your body fat. Now, I speak mostly to women who are, I'm 56, I keep actually forgetting, right? am I 56, am I 57? I'm 56, about to turn 57 this year, but I'm 56 and I am a weight loss management uh, specialist, a uh, nutritionist and a mindset coach and I work with a lot of women who are kind of in my age group and one of the things that um, most women want to um, achieve is that they want to reach that ideal weight, that ideal beautiful healthy weight, which is different for everybody, isn't it? We're really talking about your healthy weight. Most of the time you'll kind of know in your body we're all different shapes and sizes, which is beautiful, but you'll know when you're at your beautiful ideal weight. However, I wanna make real clear that there is a big difference between the weight on the scale, the number on the scale, and the, uh, the, the way that your body is releasing fat. And in that respect, the number on the scale isn't always very accurate. It can be actually inaccurate. And, and, and we get so caught up in that, don't we? It's like, oh my God, the number on the scale. If it's down, you're in a good mood. If it's up, you feel terrible. We make meaning of it and, and whatnot. So what I would say here is let's make not make so much meaning about the number on the scale and let's instead turn our attention to releasing body fat because as we get older, um, particularly women who are in uh, perimenopause, many menopause and beyond, we do gain more fat. That is what happens. We lose lean muscle mass. I'm going to talk a little bit more about lean muscle mass and how to preserve it at the end of this video. So do stick around to the end. But today I really want to focus on the best way of eating uh, to reduce body fat. It's as simple as that and it is pretty conclusive and quite clear cut. Um, as a nutritionist, I follow the science because there's so many different differing opinions out there, aren't there? Everybody's got a different opinion and it's super confusing for you and those of you out there who are really searching for a solution to the fact that you don't like the way that your body's looking or feeling or its health status as you get older. And so you're searching and you see all these conflicting opinions and so it's super um, confusing for you. So I like to stick to the science and to that end, I have um, a link to a science a really good scientific study underneath this uh, video which really illustrates uh, what I'm going to be talking about in this video. What I am going to be talking about in this video are five reasons why a whole food plant-based diet is your best strategy when it comes to reducing body fat. That's it. End of story, super duper simple. And what we found is that in numerous randomized trials um, across the board, not just one trial, not just two or three trials, but numerous randomized trials have shown that eating a whole food plant-based diet is the most effective strategy for weight loss but fat loss actually, and maintaining that fat loss over time, even when controlling for um, energy intake. So that's really important. So we like to stick to the science. So if you're interested and you've got some questions or this video raises questions for you, please um, have a good read of that study. Um, the other piece that I just wanted to say before I get into these five reasons why a whole food plant-based diet is your best strategy for releasing that fat off your body, um, is that I have a masterclass, a free masterclass underneath this video, and I am going to be talking about nutrition in this video, but honestly, when it comes to reaching and maintaining your beautiful ideal weight, the body that you want so that you can be uh, the best version of you and live the best version of you, there's so much more to it than just nutrition or exercise or hormone balance. There's a lot more to it. 
it. There's mindset as well. And this is what I touch on and I go through the five shifts that my clients have made, all of them have made, in order to get the sort of transformative results that they were seeking. So go and check that out. It's absolutely free, 45 minutes, and take notes while you're watching it. All right, right so excuse me, let's get into the five reasons why a whole food plant-based diet is your best strategy when it comes to reducing your body fat. And as I said in the title to this, it's a little silly, the title of the video, like Eat Your Way Slim, and it sounds like one of those magazine covers or those sort of um, diet books or whatever, you know, eat your way slim and eat whatever you want to eat your way slim, which is generally where those go. It's like, oh, you can still eat what you want, but eat in moderation or eat this or eat that, whatever. There's a lot of misinformation. So I am going to make this very, very simple for you. All right. So reason number one why a whole food plant-based diet is your best strategy is to do with something called caloric density. So we want to eat foods. You want to try and eat foods. Your best strategy is foods that are low in caloric density. It's as simple as that. But Eating a little amount of food, which is why portion control doesn't work, and eating tiny restrictive portions where you go hungry, not a good strategy. You're only going to be able to do that for a short amount of time. It never, ever works long term. So you want to eat a lot of food. You want to eat to satiety, but you want to eat foods that are low in caloric density. And so a whole food plant-based diet, whole foods, whole plant-based foods um, are, are mainly comprised of water and fiber. All right, so there's a lot of food. The volume of the food is a lot. You could eat a massive Buddha goat bowl, grain bowl, a beautiful uh, low starchy food salad, whatever it is. Um, and that food will fill you up. There's a lot there. It's like, oh my gosh, the volume of the food is gonna be, I am completely satiated. I couldn't eat another bite, but it's low caloric density on account of the water and the fiber. And this is not really the case when it comes obviously to other diets that are much higher in fat and lower in complex carbs, such as the really popular diets like keto and paleo and all those diets. Stick around to the end because I am actually going to be talking about keto versus whole food plant-based diet right at the end of this video and I don't want you to miss that. It's really important information. All right, so reason number two why um, a whole food plant-based diet um, is your best strategy for reducing fat stores is because of your gut micro, microbiota. That's your gut health, your digestive health. So it is crucial that you have a balanced microbiota, meaning that you have um, a good balance between the good and bad bacteria, but actually that you have more good bacteria in your gut than bad bacteria. The good bacteria crowds out the back, back, bad bacteria. Now, you need this obviously for, for general health, for immunity and everything else, but it directly relates to fat loss as well. And this is because of the uh, the manner in which your uh, stomach empties. It's called gastric emptying. Um, it's also energy balance, um, and it's also inflammation. So these three things relate directly to your body's ability to release fat stores or or, or not to be able to release fat, or or how it deals with fat metabolism. Now. I could really get into the weeds of the science here, but I am not going to because I don't want this video to be too long. But I just want to touch on this, and I have done uh, touched on this in other videos, but it's, it, 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 it's relevant to this, is that when you eat whole plant-based foods, um, these fibers, soluble and insoluble fibers, are gobbled up by the good bacteria in your gut, and the good bacteria in your gut release, releases something called short-chain fatty acids. Very, very important. Remember this, short chain fatty acids. And these short chain fatty acids do two, they do lots of things, but they do two really important things when it comes to, you know, being, um, eating in a way that you're going to release, you know, your fat stores. One is they signal to your brain um, that you're full. And uh, it's an ap appetite a regulatory break, if you like, short chain fatty acids. And also releases, relates to gastric um, emptying, meaning that you're gonna stay full longer and inflammation. And I think um, in this 
uh, in, at this on this point, the inflammation is a very, very important piece when it comes to um, being able to release fat. If your body is inflamed, then you are not going to be able to release those fat stores or it's going to be very, very slow. It's really going to impede your progress. So this is super important. A beautiful, healthy gut and, and the food for a healthy gut, the food that your good bacteria wants is whole food plant-based, those plant fibers, insoluble and soluble. Number three, insulin sensitivity. So insulin resistance is, uh, is directly related to body fat and the inability to release those fat stores. So insulin resistance is characterized as a pathology that is characterized by a chronic elevated state of these fats, these lipoproteins in your blood or, you know, in your system that really can't be stored as they should be stored. And this can be absolutely so deleterious to your health, to all of your organs, and of course can lead to prediabetes and diabetes, etc. Um, but really important to realize here, and this speaks to some of the diets that, um, you know, uh, um, are proponents of, you can eat, you know, all this animal fat, which is saturated fat. And the problem is, is that saturated fat, uh, an increased intake of saturated fat, can lead to insulin resistance. It's that simple. They're, they're very interesting and complicated mechanisms to, with insulin resistance and fat storage, um, whereby, you know, the fat cells and, and the muscle cells, you know, if there is too much fat, if you've been eating too much fat over the years, a standard American diet and particularly saturated fat, that basically when you put more fat and or sugar, you know, into your system and you eat those foods, you know, they're, they're gatekeepers to the cells. That is really basically what insulin resistance is, which are like, mm -mm, no room in the end. You can't come in here. And then there's a problem because that's all in your blood. And that's if you have your blood tested and there's, you know, high uh, triglyceride levels, etc. cetera. Um, you know, these are really important when it comes to releasing fat off your body. It really is. So if you go to the doctor, you have your levels tested, it's not really just, oh, I have to reduce the amount of sugar in my diet. That is the symptom, having too much, uh, having high sugar levels. That's the symptom. It's not the cause. And so the, the what, getting to the cause is we have to address this lipotoxicity. And, um, and the way that you're going to do this is by primarily eating a whole food plant-based diet that is low in fat. And when I say low in fat, I don't mean um, low fat foods. I mean, uh, you eat tons of healthy fats, such as nuts, seeds, avocados, etc., but really low in processed foods and a lot of even plant oils and obviously saturated fat. Okay, reason number four why a whole food plant-based diet might is, I was gonna say might be, but is your best strategy when it comes to uh, fat um, storage or releasing uh, the fat of your body. Um, is because of something called TMAO. So let me quickly explain. There are two compounds uh, mostly found in meat. One is called L-carnitine. This is found in red meat, uh, all animal products, um, but mainly in red meat. And then there's something called choline, which is found in primarily in eggs, actually, red meat, eggs, and animal products. There is a little bit of choline in some plant-based foods, but it's a tiny bit. So mainly we're talking about animal products and eggs. L-carnitine and choline. Now, when these are uh, metabolized, they release something called TMAO. Again, I don't want to get too much into the weeds here, but um, important to point out that in those who are overweight and obese and, and unable um, to release fat stores, these individuals have been found to have very high levels of TMAO. And TMAO is associated with a significantly higher body mass index and waist circumference, which is basically your, your fat on your body. So we want to reduce your TMAO O levels and the way that you do that is to eat a whole food plant-based diet. And number 
five reason why a whole food plant-based diet is your best strategy is polyphenols. So polyphenols are very potent antioxidants. They're found in plant-based foods. Um, they are found in, uh, let's go olives, let's go grapes, let's go green tea, let's go dark green leafy vegetables, lots and lots of different foods in the plant-based uh, kingdom um, contain very high levels of polyphenols. Now, polyphenols are related to insulin sensitivity, all right, so they will really, really help with insulin resistance, with not e you not even getting insulin resistance in the first place, and I've already covered this point as well. And they have been found to be incredibly helpful to, when I say sort of weight loss diet, it's weight loss, but uh, prohibiting fat storage. And so you want to eat as many polyphenols as possible. And this is one of the reasons why I have my clients try to drink a lot of green tea, because green tea is very high in polyphenols. And, um, and also, if you think of an olive, this is a really good example. So an olive, very high in polyphenols. Also, water and fiber. You can see how all of these points all tie in with each other. Um, but when you press an olive um, to get olive oil, you, you remove all of the uh, fiber and water. So you have essentially a refined food that only has a very tiny amount of polyphenols in it compared to an olive. So you're much better off eating an olive than you are to have uh, tons and tons of olive oil. And remember that um, oils and fats, it doesn't matter whether it's an olive oil or a or lard, uh, fat is fat, oil is oil, and fat and oil contains nine calories per gram, where, whereas a complex carbohydrate contains four calories per gram. So you, um, many studies have shown that polyphenols can be very, very helpful in reducing body fat. All right, so finally, I'm going to get to uh, sort of all pitting a ketogenic diet against a whole food plant-based diet. So really in short, um, if you were to go on uh, anyone who, who really said, I just wanna lose a lot of fat off my body um, and, and lose a lot of weight, uh, went on either one of those diets, right? You, you could have an equal amount of weight loss, the number on the scale. I didn't say fat, I said the number on the scale could be equal. Actually, you might even have a more rapid uh, weight loss number on the scale going down on a ketogenic diet. Now, but not fat loss. I had a client who came to me a year ago, she did a ketogenic diet, she lost 40 pounds very quickly. Uh, within six months, she put on all 40 pounds and another five, so she put on 45 pounds and she didn't lose any fat, no waist circumference, body mass index didn't budge at all. She was so upset and disappointed. I hear this time and time again. So you might see the number on the scale drop. This is because you're losing lean muscle mass. This is so crucial to understand and skeletal or skeletal muscle. You're losing what you actually want to keep. You're losing this on a ketogenic diet. So that is why it is absolutely essential to understand that if you want to lose fat, reduce the amount of fat on your body, the most effective strategy, and also for long-term weight loss as well, for actual long-term number on the scale going down and down and down. It's not going to be so quick and dramatic as going on a ketogenic uh, diet necessarily, the number on the scale. Sometimes it is, but not always. So that's the quick fix. That's the quick and often unhealthy fix because also a ketogenic diet can lead to um, atherosclerosis, can de ar arterial dysfunction, cardiovascular disease, certain other cancers as well. So, you know, even you know, even if you were to lose that, um, you know, see the number drop on the scale, you're putting yourself at higher risk for disease. But really, truly, what this video is about is how to reduce fat off your body. And the most effective uh, strategy is a whole food plant-based diet. Um, it really is as simple as that. And if you're interested in, um, in, in reading a little deeper into my last point here, because I know it's a sticking point for so many people who've been led to believe, oh, ketogenic diet or paleo diet, or I can't, you know, I have so many people who come to me and they're carb phobic. So if I cannot eat a carb, please, please look at that study underneath the video, because it goes into it in way more 
scientific detail than I can in the scope of this video. But it's so important to understand because simply as you get older, I don't want you to, to lose lean, that beautiful lean muscle mass and that skeletal muscle. You need that for health and functionality and for a beautiful body. So that's super, super duper important to understand. So go look at that study. Go look at my masterclass underneath this video. I think you'll find both of those super duper helpful and I will see you next time.